What's fascinating about that is that's a digital space, right? We're not even talking about embodied AI and the needs that's going to have from a training perspective and all that stuff. So the human or robots, like the Optimus bot is what we talk about a lot on the channel. And then what other form factors of embodied AI is are going to exist in the future? I highly doubt we're just going to stop at the human form factor. We're going to have many other use cases for embodied AI. Digital AI is going to continue going through a massive sort of moment of gaining more and more intelligence, which is going to create more and more need for compute. I guess the is there going to be a point where the training side of the equation is going to hit a limit where these battery systems are no longer going to be as valuable as we thought much sooner than maybe we expect and it all shifts over to inference and so inference is not going to really need much from a say a mega cluster or maybe it does i don't know let me reframe the question is this need for energy where battery storage, specifically things like the mega block and the mega pack could vastly benefit from. Is this a training compute only thing or is this an AI period thing? Is it both training and inference? Any AI needs going to need this, this sort of co-located, call it whatever, battery thing. Does that even make any sense? You, I'm actually scripting on this at the moment for one of my upcoming videos. And I think what you're talking about is there's going to be Currently, we need these massive data centers for training AI. And I think what you're saying is over time, we're going to need more inference compute because Relative. as we train these, we'll yeah. Go, yeah. So we're going to need a lot more inference compute over time. And that's true. And that's part of the reason why Tesla set aside their dojo program, because if training is only going to be like 5% of your total compute, why would you invest all this money into that? Why not just use their current inference chip and make it? also good at training rather than have it, having a dedicated program project towards that. So yes, now, but it's also a matter of you have the training compute, which is better centralized and you have the inference compute, which also currently tends to be centralized. However, over time, a lot of that inference compute is going to be pushed out to the edge in robo taxis and robots and things like that. So you're ultimately, it could be that these centralized, at least I took a wild stab at it. Currently, the amount of compute people have in their homes and devices in terms of power compared to the amount of compute that's in data centers is like three to one. So if Elon wants to build one terawatt of compute. Who's got the three? Oh, I'll explain it here in a moment. So if you have Elon wants to do one terawatt of compute, if you do that three to one split, maybe only 250 gigawatts of that one terawatt would be centralized training and the rest would be pushed out to the edge. For example, if you have 1 billion or let's say 4 billion Optimus robots and each one needs 250 watts, there's your terawatt right there. So that doesn't imply, though, that the needs from a training perspective are going to go down. If anything, it probably means that the training is going to be increased because there's going to be such a massive need for the inference to work on the edge. It's going to it's gonna be have less of a slice of the pie, but the pie is going to grow by... Hundreds yeah. of orders of magnitude. Multiples. Yeah, okay. Got it. Yeah, yeah. I think that that's exactly right. So your training needs are going to significantly increase. And one of the ways that I'm just thinking about this right now is you've got all this infrastructure out there that has, for the most part, been to like train on the world's corpus of text, which is extremely efficient in terms of the size of storage that, that you need to process that. As we start going into a world where we're processing a lot more video, and handling things like that, the compute needs are going to increase like very significantly. And then e even just on the, like thinking about the types of things that we're going to be training in the future, Elon had a good post about this recently, where it was like talking about all the degrees of freedom in a robotic hand and okay, you can make this left turn if you're in a car, any number of ways, but the number of inputs are like pretty minimal. It's what's the angle of the steering wheel and like how aggressively am I hitting the accelerator? It's like that, that complicated. But then you're going from, okay, how do I pick up this can on the other hand, when I've got like all these different joints and all these different figures and do I have my arm up here? Do I have it down here? Like the level of nuance and the amount of computation that is going to need to be done to handle more complicated product predictions like that, or training runs like that, I think is going to be very significant. But that, that said, I think as much training compute as we're going to need for that, I completely agree with what Jordan said. Like the overall pie is going to just expand massively. We're going to need way more training compute than we have right now. But at the same time, I think training is only going to be about 10% of the overall compute needs in the long term, I think, because there'll be so much more demand for inference because you're going to want all this stuff to be doing useful stuff in the real world.
We lost our camera, Matt. Thank Wait, God. What is going I'm, on? I'm just kidding. I'm... No, you know what? This podcast. Oh, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> this podcast okay. is, what is going sponsored on? by Rebellionaire. As you can see, <laughs> top tier <Whoa>. production. <laughs> And I did want to circle back to your original question, which I think I spoke around before Farzad, which was like, okay, as we're going to more and more inference, do we actually like not need as many batteries for that reason? I think as Jordan highlighted, there's stuff like at the edge, like your, your Optimus and your FSD that obviously you're not going to have a mega pack power and that stuff, but you still are going to have a very significant need for, you call it regional inference data centers that are going to be like very massive facilities, because there's going to be a lot of stuff that you're doing that similar to what ChatGPT does today, even more in depth. And I think agentic AI, we haven't really even dipped our toe in the water of what that's going to do. And I think that's going to create a huge need for inference compute going forward. And for that, you don't need it to be like super energy efficient and like on the edge, you want it to actually be in a data center. So you're going to have, I think, specialized inference data centers that are local to the population center that they're trying to serve. And I think those are still going to be absolutely massive. I think they're still going to have absolutely massive energy needs and mega packs are going to have a, a place to play there. I don't think it's necessarily the case that like mega packs will only work on training. Uh, they certainly want to edge compute, but localized data centers. Absolutely. Got it. Is that the reason why Oracle popped so much in the last few days? Because they were guiding towards that? No, Oracle, I just absolutely just smashed their forward guidance. I'm going to botch these numbers somewhat, but I think they, they had something like $3 billion in quarterly Oracle Cloud infrastructure revenue for that most recent quarter. And they were saying that by 2030, they were going to have, what was it, like $170 billion That's in insane. annual Oracle Cloud revenue. So they gave this five-year ramp where it was like, they were like increasing 77% and then 80%. Wow. And so like they painted this picture that was just like wild. And, but are they connected? Uh, is that isn't Oracle a cloud service provider for some of these AI companies to run their inference? Isn't that one of the things they do? Yeah, so they manage a lot of these data centers. Yeah, for some of the hyperscalers. Yeah, the, but they're extremely efficient at building and operating these. And so yeah, they're partnering with a lot of different companies to essentially provide that get these data centers up up and running quickly. But that that, that shows you where the demand is though, because yeah. they. The, the, like, these are actually, I forget the accounting term that they had, but they're deals that are at least partially booked that are going out that far and that wow. are increasing that drastically. Wow. That's insane. And so a percentage of that earnings is going to be tied directly to the, the cost structure that's going to generate those earnings is going to be directly tied to the energy generation and storage piece for those cloud facilities, obviously. I mean, they'd probably view it more as investment in data centers and they are leasing some of them. So there's a bit of a kind of complicated thing there, but I think these hyperscalers tend to think in terms of like compute and then naturally with that, you've got to figure out how you're going to power that. So it's right. like the secondary thing that comes along with it. It's not necessarily that energy generation and storage is driving a lot of these decisions. It's just, no, of course. Okay. No. If you're increasing that much, it's like, naturally you got to figure out how the hell you're solving that problem. That's my point. That, sorry. Maybe I'm not articulating it properly. So what I'm saying is, so if the driver is compute the secondary mm -hmm. the second order effect is going to be i need more energy <laughs> yeah like i need yeah. way more yeah yeah got it okay